The seasons hit rock bottom, or maybe it gets so much worse. We've had enough of all these jerks, it's all gone so, so wrong. So we made some minor tweaks to our brand new theme song. It's the Purple Rock Survivor Podcast. Janet is cool. Hello and welcome to the Purple Rock Survivor Podcast. I am your host, Andy. Uh, with me this week is Matt, who is not the person I said would be with me next week, last week. But uh, I decided I'd rather talk to him. Uh, so uh, welcome to the show, Matt. Surprise, motherfuckers! It's Matt! There you go. Oh yeah, uh, warning, there will be some colorful language tonight. Um, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a different episode for us, as it was a bit of a different episode for Survivor. Um, we all know what happened. I guess if you're listening to this in the future and didn't read what this is about, this is when uh, Survivor had a normal, boring-ass episode. And then disrupted everything at the end by Jeff Probst showing up and informing the cast that, uh, you know, a guy who had been uh, sexually harassing people all season was finally taken out. Um, so that's what we're reacting to. And uh, we got a different things. But uh, I thought we'd start by just sharing uh, a little bit of information that I imagine most listeners have already heard. Because, you know, if you're following a podcast, you probably also follow the news on Survivor Online. But some people, maybe they just watch the episode and then, you know, they also listen to us. So I thought I'd just kind of inform people of a little bit more information that we've gotten in, uh, since the episode aired. And this was due to reporting from people.com. Uh, and I'm just going to read it. Uh, great podcasting, I know. Uh, but it, it's going to inform a lot of the discussion that Matt and I are about to have. So I felt yep. it was important to kind of get that forth. All right. Uh, so people have spoken to multiple people involved in the show's production who have confirmed that the incident in question, which involved a member of the show's production team, happened after an immunity challenge as Spilo, that would be Dan Spilo, and other contestants were getting into a boat to transport them back to camp. At one point, Spilo allegedly touched the female crew member's leg. According to multiple sources, he insisted that the contact was inadvertent and accidental as he lost his balance while trying to get into the boat. At least one of the remaining contestants witnessed the incident. But the show's production team wasn't convinced that the contact was merely incidental. After consulting with the show's legal team, producers eventually decided to remove him from the show. Sources tell people that Spilo vehemently disagreed with the decision to remove him from the game. So that's a little that's more than what we got from the show. Yep. Um, the show obviously we just got that card. Uh this itself is still pretty vague. Uh and there's you know parts of it that you know the vagueness can lead to some doubt. I don't think any of it leads to doubt that like looks good for any involved. It's my mostly generally degrees of awfulness. But you know, there is some people out there that are rumoring that you know uh, Dan is. Uh, it wasn't. It was. Yeah. And again, their card doesn't say it's anything about like a continuation of uh, the behavior that Dan's been exhibiting all season long. No, I thought the card did say that actually. It just said an incident. I think. I don't think. Uh, I could be wrong. And honestly, I'm going to use the card as like the picture for this episode. Oh. So maybe by then I will know. Um, but I mean. It's a little bit more, you know, it tells you that, you know, a staff member, which they did say in the episode yeah. that it wasn't a contestant. Um, yeah, so what was your reaction? Because you watch this live, I watch, well, after the fact, not live, obviously, but as it's airing. Uh, honestly, I was semi-spoiled in that I logged on to uh, Twitter to put, like, a pithy... Uh, observation about like the bag that was holding all the names that sent Dean to uh, tribal council, and when I did that, you know, I you know I log in and then you go right to your profile so you don't read anything. But in the instant where it shows me my timeline, there was a post by Kelly at the top with like a screenshot of a statement. So I'm like, oh, something went down. Yeah. Uh, and then my wife was sent me spoiled before the end of the episode. Um, because she can't stay off social media, and this happens to her more often than one enough for you to think she'd stop going on. Uh, so she's like, yeah, it w clearly wasn't that Elaine was going home. 
which I had already said was what was going to happen. It was pretty obvious. Uh, and then the fact that there was still like six minutes left by the time that was done, I was like, all right, something's going down. But so I, I was a little bit more prepared. You experienced it as it was happening. What was that like for you? Matt? Uh, well, like you said, there was about six minutes, you know, left. And, you know, I even noted that they went to tribal kind of early and I thought that was odd. I thought there might be a switcheroo, even though it seemed like it was ver- going to be a very straightforward vote. Like you said, Elaine was going to go home. I didn't think their plan was going to work. I didn't think any idols were going to be played. So there was no reason to leave extra time at Tribal. And then, you know, there's six minutes left, and we go back to the beach, and suddenly it's day, and Jeff's walking up. And this is where I admit something. Uh, me and John had heard this rumor a couple weeks ago. And we didn't tell other people because, you know, we wanted to see if it would be true before we start just spreading it around there because it was a rumor. But um, but we did think this was coming. And so when it started to happen, I was like, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen. This is me talking calmly because I'm going to transition into not doing that as much soon. Uh, Just my initial reaction was first before we saw the end card i wonder what happened and when did it happen because there is no timeline that is good for them there are some timelines that are even worse for them um and then we got that end card and again like i i forget the exact words i probably should have looked it up before going on this podcast but again the exact words don't matter so much uh and the, and the statement to people is really what we're working off of to get the details of what happened. And I was furious. And I think uh, a lot of people were furious. And it's a, it, it's 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 been bubbling up for ever since the merch. We yep. have been watching, and everyone was pissed after the merge, and Survivor was surprised. And knowing that something else might be coming – made their surprise ring so much more hollow. Because if you are a part of this show and you know that what happens in the merge happens, and then you know before you air and cut and edit that episode that this guy's going to get pulled later in the game, then what the fuck are you doing and how the fuck do you think you handled this right? And there's a number of levels in which I think they fucked up. And the problem is that now I look back at my initial reaction after the merge. And I look back at the anger that I held, not just towards production, but in that moment towards the other contestants. And I feel like I got fucking played. Because what's been amply illustrated by this episode and by the events, and again... It you know the timeline's either bad for production or worse for production, so it's not going to save them. Is that they fucked up? They allowed this to happen, and they think they handled this correctly. Now, I'm going to be talking about a lot of things tonight, uh, and I'm not going to be doing it yet. But I'm actually going to be talking about w- some of the stuff I think is happening behind the scenes. From a legal perspective, because you guys just happen to get lucky and you got a lawyer on. So, you know, if you don't want to hear that, you know, like tune out pretty soon because we're going to be getting into that. And I'm actually going to be talking about legal standards. So, yeah, there is this is, I think, where the betrayal comes from the most. I think it comes from the fact that the way this looks And it looks this way because I think it is this way, is that Survivor doesn't care what happens to its contestants, but it does care what happens to its crew. And so there's a double standard there. It's not not real if it happens to a contestant. Mm. If a contestant complains about it, you know, well, we have to verify that, despite the fact that everything they do is is videoed. But if it happens to a crew, oh, we got to leap into action. This is serious. And that fucking pisses me off because the people with the least power to actually govern behavior like this are the contestants. They are not the, you know, like survivors all like, oh, this is a social experiment. They have the power themselves. Fuck that. This is a game that, as we've been saying for weeks and weeks on end, encourages the worst behavior in the name of the game. 
And when that's bad behavior that can be divorced from morality, that doesn't have the type of real-world consequences this does, we're fine with it. And frankly, that's why we enjoy that show. We enjoy when people lie and manipulate, but it doesn't have that impact on real world and real things. But this did. And you cannot rely on the players to enforce this when you have that power. And the thing is, this showed they had that fucking power. They pulled him just on the allegation. They even said it wasn't caught on camera. But they had the power to pull him despite that. Now, Mm -hmm. again, we're going to be talking about some of the legal stuff in a bit. So I'm going to be talking about why they think they handled this right and why they also edited it the way they did. Because I think that is entirely because of the legal consequences that they are looking at. But you you cannot be looking at the way this went down, the way people have reacted, and think that you did everything right for we you know when it first came up four weeks ago. You cannot mm-hmm. be reacting to it so blasé as if everything is just normal. So there's the fuck up on the show. There's the fact that they're enforcing a double standard. And then there's this online reaction that's been happening for five weeks while they've known what's coming down the line, and they've been trying to pretend that it won't matter. And it just adds up to a show which, again, it's not even that they fucked up. It's that they have irreparably broken the faith and trust the audience has in production to protect the contestants we have faith that if the contestants were in physical danger they would be protected when there was a hurricane on the show and the crew deemed it got too close they evacuated everyone on the show to get them to safety so from physical danger The crew knows and the producers know they have to protect these people. And being able to watch this show and think to yourself, okay, people are going to get hurt. That can happen. But there's a medical crew right there. If there is a Mm -hmm. natural disaster, they will get them out of there. You know, this is – nothing is ever 100 percent safe, but they are taking precautions to keep them safe from physical danger. And what this showed is that they don't take the, what happened here seriously, despite the fact that there is ample evidence of what happened. Right. Yeah, and uh, all of that, I think, is being expressed a lot, the, the anger, and I, I totally get it. Uh, I'll say for me, I didn't react in anger because everything was messed up at the at the merge and it's never recovered and my feelings have never recovered so it was not possible for them to anger me more it was basically what i've noticed uh they removed dan i got nothing out of that uh janet could win i don't think she's going to i think she's probably going to you know get taken out by you know uh dean's uh fun uh idol counselor but even if she won, I don't think I would feel happy about it. It's just, it's broken. It's over. And I've moved past the anger stage to just be like, yeah, this is what happens. This is why you, you needed to fix this. This is why you needed to address this. And it's yeah. just further. And with, you know, still having empathy for, you know, the the next person who had to deal with what Dan said. Yeah. And I also, I understand the feeling that, like, this shows that they care more about their crew. I can see ways that that's not necessarily true. Yeah, and I'm going to actually talk about some of those ways. So Yeah, not all of them are good, by the no, way. No, no, uh, Part of it is could be because they issued the warning. Yeah. That, like, if he had done it to another female contestant in that, then it might have been the same result. Also, if they hadn't had the this, this stuff with Kelly and the warning, maybe they wouldn't have listened to the, you know, production. Like, I, I can't even, like, give them that necessarily, that, you know, they, they'll they listen to their production people, but they won't listen to the contestants. Uh, I'm not even sure the two are completely related, so I don't know that it's that they care more about this than that. Um. So, yeah, it's just, it all goes back to the decision to allow this to happen that they didn't uh, take it seriously when day one it was being talked about and it's weird like 
not enough people, I feel, are talking how Molly also discussed this in yeah. the first few days. Yep. Uh, but it's so long ago, and you know, she's been gone for so long. Like, it's not just Kelly. This go. Uh, you had double corroboration. You had, you know, people they were talking to, you know, um, uh, like Janet specifically. Yep. You know, listening and believing. Not There wasn't any, oh, you guys are making this up. So they had ample opportunity, and they screwed it up. And from that point on, from the point where... They don't do anything at the merge other than a terrible little, you know, I, we we had a talking with people. And the result is that Kelly gets voted out. Yeah. And, uh, as a, a result of contestants using this as gameplay. That's it. it was, there was no turning back from that. No, there, there wasn't. And this and is I, just proof of and that. I, and, I agree, and I agree with you. You know, you know it, it's the merge broke this season. We've been talking about that ever since it happened mm -hmm. you know and, and tonight i am not as mad as i was last night i might get there i told you to you know poke mm -hmm. me until i get <laughs> there if you know for people's amusement um you know probably better than they do that i can be worked up into a lather um but yeah no you're right this game was broken at the merge what made me mad last night was I think this game might be broken forever. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something I've been struggling with since the merge as well. And um, it certainly didn't make me feel better about it. It is ultimately what I have to grapple with. And again, there's a chance that they've learned from this. You yeah. know, we've heard some things that they've you know, talked to some people. I don't think we're ever going to get the Mia Culpa that we want. No. And we're going to talk about why. Yeah. But in the end, uh, the show that we like so much and we spend all this extra time with is a show that, you know, convinced people that it's like, eh, you know what, let's just get rid of the person complaining and, in fact, use her complaints to uh, blindside her. Yep. And we'll do that because we feel like that's probably what she's doing to us. Even though both halves of this conversation knew that it was legitimate. Yep. They 100%. had a legitimate conversation that what Dan was saying. So that's what we are watching. And we're, and then as a result, so, you know, the structure of the game might realize that this is a, a, a thing that has deeper moral compromises than I realized. And is being run by people who, when push came to shove, made the same decision as the contestants of, well, that's the show. Yeah. You know, you had this later on. Um, but I think it's appropriate to talk about now. Um, there's a mentality that the show must go on. Uh, there's a mentality that mm -hmm. you have to, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, it's Survivor. We just, it can sort itself out, right? You know, the contestants will create the story that they want to create. It's bullshit. And, it's, it, it, and, and it puts you in this situation that is so much worse when you could have prevented it. And, and like... You know, there's some argument that, like, in the past that these things did sort themselves out, so they weren't, um, you know, maybe ready for it. But frankly, just by fluke, and not always in the right way. Right. In Thailand, Ted Count went on, and Gandia didn't. Yep. Um, you know, Will Sims went to the finals of Worlds Apart. Yep. So it doesn't always sort itself out the way you want it to, and obviously these are varying levels. Um, but, yeah, it's you can't allow that to happen, and one of the, yeah... We've been saying it over and over. Like, I have nothing new to this. Yeah. They they screwed up on a level that, you know, they can't walk back other than to just, you know, there, there's no turning back that. It's, it's what was broken. It was already broken. Frankly, last week, I made a college try at trying to, like, hey, let's have some fun out of yeah. this. And because I'm me, my level of fun was teasing people about Tommy. Right. Um, But, no, you... you when they didn't do anything and that was followed up with Kelly and Jamal going home and Janet being you know, berated for trying to do the right thing. That was it, man. Game over. Yeah. And, you know, limiting like if they had just eventually eliminated Dan because of the previous allegations too late, too late. Yeah. Uh, that they, uh, somebody else, another allegation came too late. The, you're, you, you're, you failed in your obligation to protect these people and you failed in your obligation to a show. 
Yeah. So that your idea that you know, well, that's the game, and we can't we can't interfere. We're so hands off. You ruined your show by doing so Bec- because nobody wants to see this. Right. No one wants to see this, and how can we ever trust it won't happen again? You know. I mean, you know, it's it, they're very lucky that they have returning players next season. Fuck it, I ruined the bit. I don't give a shit. We yeah, we yeah. have more faith that that will not happen then. Except for the fact that it fucking happened with returning players too. The first time they yep. happened with returning players. So now we go into every season. Two of the worst things were returning players. That's right. So now we go into every season and we worry that this is what's going to happen. That what's the next awful thing on Survivor that's going to happen? It wasn't long ago that we got the Zeke incident. Come on. Yeah. It's not like this stuff is all in the ancient past. This shit is happening recently. The two of the two of the people we two of the incidents, two of the people we have mentioned on this show have been in the past 10 seasons. This is recent history. And they're not solving anything. And it's because of this mentality of the everything's hands off. Now, maybe this time the outcry is enough to change it. I hope so, because that's the only way it's going to happen. It's only going to happen if they think they will lose viewers because of this or advertisers because of this. But the problem is they're on CBS, and CBS is rotten to the core. This was the network that yep. was run by Les Moonvis, who, you know, I don't need to tell you what he did, but guess what? It's the same shit. You know, this you know, this is the show that showed us, you know, after one of those earlier moments, Dan saying, you know, it's like, you know, Hollywood's where Me Too started, as if that made them better, and not because it started there, because they're fucking rotten to the core there. Because there was so much abuse there that eventually people spoke up. Yeah. So here's – and that's the problem. They, we have just lo- – we have lost all faith in the show to be what we hope and what we, what we think it is when now they have shown us that, you know, no. There's an ugly side to this show that will rear its head all too often if we let it. Yeah, and – Moreover, like, okay, so it rears, like, the Zeke thing. They took care of that right away. Yeah. Like, you know, to the point where it was celebrated by different groups, right? But, That's lucky. Right. And frankly, as much as they took care of it, Zeke himself will tell you that he knew from that point on he had no chance to win the game. Yeah. And that's the problem. The, the reward structure of this game is that messed up. And and I also want to say, when we say they took care of it, it was the people on it wasn't the It wasn't Jeff and the producers. It was... Everyone that rallied around Zeke, that was a contestant right there, and made it very clear that he, uh, and made it very clear that Varner was going home, because I don't think yeah. Jeff was just, just going to pull Varner right there. He basically said, "Oh, how could you say that?" And he took Varner to task, but he wasn't going to say, "You're out." When Brandon was acting like a crazy person, they didn't pull him right away. They made people vote on it. Yeah, and, like, so the show-must-go-on mentality that we're talking about extends to this incident, most likely. Yes. Uh, because, and, and you know, I, I put emphasis on it when reading it, but it's, like, happened after an immunity challenge. Yeah. We don't know which immunity challenge. Yeah. It's an immunity challenge, but that's, you know, not necessarily intentional vagary. They probably didn't, they might not have realized that, you know, that causes some ambiguity. It's possible that there was a final six immunity challenge and that was the one. Yep. And then they did pull them right away. And we're just never going to see that. That's totally possible. Yep. It's also possible that this was immunity challenge a long time ago. And, and frankly, maybe the crew member didn't go forward right away. It's not always, you know, it's not easy to do, especially if you happen to be working on a show or like, Oh, I guess this is the way we're rolling now. I've been filming this abuser for a while now. Yep. Um, I think the most likely thing, and obviously the implication that we felt, was that it was after the challenge that would eventually lead uh, uh, to the Tribal Council where Elaine went home. Yep. So while they're dealing with this, they're, they still have a Tribal Council and Elaine goes home instead of surviving as a result of their decision making. Dan is pulled the next morning, which is our interpretation of what happened. I don't know if that's what yep. it is. 
because they're like, oh, God, what do we do? And, you know, as it says here, you know, the con- uh, consulting with the show's legal team. But they're still like, but we got to go to tribal council. We still got to do these things. We still got to let Dan vote until we've made a decision. To be fair, the legal team is not likely on site. So, you know, it could take the legal team a bit of time to get back to them or to do the analysis they have to do. And I don't know how much time there is between – the moment that happened, the moment they figured it out in tribal council, that might be tight to make that decision if you have to consult with legal. But here's the thing: they have warned him before. This shouldn't be able. This shouldn't be something they have to consult with legal. This should be something that at that point is automatic. Yeah, no. And look, I under- I honestly even understand that this isn't a decision that they could necessarily do right away. The answer is you pause. Yeah. Exactly. And they, that's the thing. They won't pause. You know, somebody is nearly dropping dead on water, you know, not drinking enough water, and then they'll pause. But, you know, when they're, you know, struggling, like, just the idea the show must go on. And I've seen this before. And frankly, I didn't, you know, process it the way that I'd be most proud of. So I used to be a wrestling fan. Um, yeah, different points in my life when I was a kid and as Hulk Hogan. But then again, in the Attitude Era when I was like a college age person. Yeah. Um, and one night, I was frankly moving back to the city I live in now that night, there were reports that a wrestler who, you know, I, I really liked from my you know hometown had fallen to his death at the, near the beginning of the show, uh, because of a failed stunt. They still did the fucking show. Yeah. They still did the pa- pay-per-view, um, while, you know, his blood is stained on the mattress, they sent his coworkers out yep. there to, you know... Put on a show because, you know, the arena's full. We have this show. We have storylines plotted out weeks and months in advance. And, you know, we have another show tomorrow in another city that will be live on TV. And uh, at the time when I heard about it, even I was like, oh, God, what do they do? They have all this. Instead of, like, just stopping, like, a fucking person died yeah. here. And, you know, this isn't that. In fact, I, you know, I sometimes even have trouble when people, like, almost... To the, because of their anger, almost exaggerate what was happened as though what happened wasn't bad enough. Yeah. I I don't know that it like falls under the degree of assault. Uh, sexual harassment is bad well, enough. Well, l- 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 you know, we'll talk about what assault. And is. again, I, I, again, there's and there's legal stuff. Honestly, some people even take it farther because you know, and that's the way. Like, it, we don't need to make it worse. It never should happen. Yeah. This, yeah, and frankly, like it's almost like that degree of like how you know nobody's a racist unless they have like an actual hood. Right. You know, like there's, we don't need to make things worse for them to be bad. Yep. And so this isn't that, but it's the same idea. It's the same. Well, how do we? How do we not go to tribal council? How do we just stop the show in the middle and say no? That this is unacceptable. You're gone. Or like what I you know read today from Dan Feinberg and the Hollywood Reporter. When they didn't, when they turned around and voted off Kelly, he suggests they should have just said, "Sorry, that's a wrap on the season. Yeah. Like we can't go on." But the idea, no, we we have this game, and we have to be respectful of other people's games, and we're in a live environment that's happening all the yeah. time. There needs to be somebody there who says our entertainment and your product is not more important than this, and there wasn't. Yeah. You know. We're talking about shows here, and we're talking about the show must go on. That comes from the circus. It comes from the old circus. And, you know, there's a time well before either of us were born, well before anyone listening to this was born, when they would do something like the trapeze without a net. And you know what would happen? Someone would fall occasionally. The show must go on. You know why they put the fucking net in there? Because you can't have that happen. And what Survivor has shown is that they were working without the fucking net. We thought the net was there. It was an illusion. The net that we thought was there, the net that we thought would protect people, that would save us if we made the big misstep, was an illusion. And that's why I'm mad. Yeah, and I think what happens – I think what we've seen through the history of the show – is the net is never there at first. Yeah. It's always retroactive. That's right. That's right. Oh, it'll be fun to watch them have to boil their water until somebody nearly dies of thirst. Right. You know, uh, 
Well, it's fine if a contestant's out there in a co-ed challenge completely naked. It was hilarious. People thought it was funny in season one. Right. Until, you know, he rubs his naked genitals up against another person. Right. Uh, you know, like, I feel like everything is a reaction to to what has happened. And they're just like, oh, God, we didn't even think of that. And this is that. They never thought that what this is in a in a show where there is a lot more casual touching than we encounter in normal life. Yeah. That, you know, where there, there's a lot of interpersonal dynamics going on and all that. That what was happening is not acceptable. Not anywhere. Not there. And not for our fucking TV show. Yeah. And I think next time, there'll be a net. I, I hope so. I'm not as confident. And that's not me having faith in the morality uh, of the, the people involved. It's frankly just that they, they correct after the yeah. fact. It's as what they tend to do. Uh, they don't do it before. Well, and there is a reason why I do think that there is a chance that there will be that net there the next time. And I think this is where I now put my lawyer hat on if you're ready for yes. that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about a few things that – are probably going on behind the scenes and that are happening and from what's happening on the show. First of all, you mentioned assault before. Assault is really – it's just unwanted touching. You know, like – Yeah, that's that's fair. That's yeah. absolutely so, fair. So when people talk about sexual assault, it doesn't mean that there's anything violent necessarily about it, though, of course, that mm -hmm. would encompass that. Uh, but assault is really just from a legal definition, unwanted touching. That's it. That's it. Yes. That's why people joke that, you know, like, you know, there are like legal jokes about like what assault could actually be and how benign that could be. But as but if it's unwanted and it is indicated, that is assault. So with that definition out of the way, I want to kind of speculate about what's going on behind the scenes. And I'm speculating without knowledge here. So, you know, don't, don't you know, this is, as I said, speculation. Yeah, and frankly, that's what we have to do, Correct. right? There is not being given a lot, and I frank, frankly, the absence of that information is what's leading you to some of the things you're going to talk about. Correct. So the first speculation is this. The show is worried about a lawsuit from the crew member and, the, and, and frankly, from the contestants uh, that have been on. And they should be. And this, and, uh, and, and frankly, the reason why they are worried about this is is because employers can be liable uh, for pe for employees harassing behavior in certain circumstances. So I'm going to read some stuff. And I got this online because I don't actually practice this specific type of law. But so, for instance, an employer will be held liable. And again, it, it, it'll change jurisdiction to jurisdiction despite the fact they're filming where they're filming I think they'd still be governed by California or a specific state law in the U.S. because they are a U.S. company and they're doing it for the purposes of a U.S. production. And as long as I think it's everyone confined within that production, I believe they would be uh, – I think they would be following California and U.S. law and not you know the law in the, uh, the Philippines. Th that's where they're filming, right? Fiji. Fiji. OK. Sorry about that. Um, so an employer will be held liable for a sexual harassment incident – by a supervisor, regular employee, or non-employee over whom they have control. And so in my opinion, Dan would either qualify as a regular employee or a non-employee. Actually, probably a non-employee uh, that they have control over, right. but that kind of depends on what the contract says, and uh, I've never actually seen the survivor contract. So they could be – Right, but I suspect it's not employee, and that's how they get away with paying them. Correct. Uh, non-employee whom they have control – over whom they have control if they knew or should have known – one that's one possibility second possibility did not reasonably try to prevent and promptly cor promptly correct the harassing behavior or three the employee proactively took advantage of any preventative or corrective opportunities provided by the employer um then there's some you know additional uh things that would apply if it's the harasser the harassment can also occur under a number of conditions including when, you know, there's supervisors or something like that. But the harassment can also occur when the victim is not the person harassed, but anyone who is affected by the offensive conduct. And unlawful harassment occurs without, e you know, it, it could occur without economic injury to or discharge of the victim. So 
let's talk about a few things, and I want to unpack some legalese here. So first of all, you know, under the first standard, one, it is Dan someone – is Dan first a – uh, employee or a non-employee over whom they have control? Absolutely. He is 100% someone over whom they have control. This has been demonstrated yes. time and time again. There is no question. So did they know or should have known that he was – You know, you know that, that this could happen? And again, what we've been showing throughout the entire season was they did know. So yeah. from the perspective of the crew member – this is like loud and clear. They've issued the corrective. They have done this. They have warned the person. Now, there are things about this that could then exculpate the show because they have taken measures to try to correct. Uh, they had, you know, you know, the, the, you know, the law talks about what are the measures that you can take uh, as to the harassing employee, and you know, it, it's not always just fire them right away. Sometimes it is. You know, warn them, instruct them specifically about what not to do. Now, again, we don't know exactly what they said to him because we didn't see that. We, you know, again, all we saw was a title card, you know, on the screen that alluded to something. But what we've heard from contestants is that the talk they had as a group certainly didn't indicate anything. So on that on that front, they certainly failed. And then as to what they told Dan specifically, his entire actions in the game post that point suggest again that this was not communicated in a clear enough manner. So they have to worry about a lawsuit from the employee because this was imminently foreseeable and they did not take the correct uh, corrective in terms of warning him or in terms of preventing this from happening again. Okay. But then there's also the problem that they have with Kelly, who's the other person that most people would cite to as being like, oh, you know, they might face a lawsuit from Kelly. Yeah, they might, because guess what? Uh, you know, Kelly warned them in the first episode, and they didn't t issue a corrective or a warning. If that warning, you know, at the merge was good, they didn't do that until that point, which means they allowed this to continue for a very long time. And mm -hmm. then and then we talk about, well, what was the harm? Well, you have the normal, you know, like harm that, you know, could be, you know, an emotional suffering that. But now Kelly also has an economic claim because she could say that this harmed her place in the game. Now, that's a, now that might be a little hard to prove, though, actually, in this case, I don't think it's going to be that hard to prove. You know, she probably can't say, like, well, I lost that on a million dollars. But, you know, but she would say, look, my, game, my place in the game would, be, would have been improved were they to have taken this seriously. And I think that's 100 percent true. I think that is true. So you have the so that's the Kelly point of that that they failed. But then there's something else I want to point to, which is, and I emphasize this when I read it, which is the victim could be someone who was not harassed, but anyone who was affected by the offensive conduct. So now they're facing not just a possible lawsuit from Kelly, but from a lot of other people on the season. Now, mm -hmm. we're thinking of some of the obvious ones. You mentioned Molly. Janet is someone who leaps to mind. Jamal might be someone who comes to mind. But then you have other people who could have been harmed by this. Missy, because of her reaction and because of the vitriol directed at her because of her reaction, is someone that could potentially have a claim here. And the basis for that would be this. If they had removed Dan and they'd taken him seriously, I would not have received this reaction from people in the real world. You know, maybe she has suffered some, e some emotional distress. I would not be surprised if that was the case because, she, you know, a lot of people directed hate at her. You know, for her actions, Elizabeth too. So you know, and, and and those claims, you know, a lot of people will be like, "Oh, well, they shouldn't have a claim." But that you know, the law isn't that doesn't work with just the people that we're the most sympathetic for. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it it's you know, it, the law do, you know it works to redress harm, and they could also claim harm from this. So now this really is turning into a quagmire, a potential massive quagmire that they have gotten themselves into. Because they did not act quick enough. Yeah, and there's I 
we probably one more. You want one more potential lawsuit yeah. that uh, was worth discussing. But then there's the other lawsuit, and you know how I said about how the law isn't always sympathetic; it doesn't always benefit the people that are sympathetic. One thing I have suspected mm-hmm. ever since the merge episode is that Dan threatened a lawsuit. That and you know, so what lawsuit would that be, right? He likely threatened defamation. Yes, that that's the exact it. So it's defamation. And possibly breach a contract for pulling him from the game. So, uh, so what is you know? So breach a contract. I think you know. I think they'd probably be on pretty good ground there. Uh, you know, you know. It, it's it's. I, I think their contracts do allow them to pull people uh, pretty much uh, mm-hmm. on, under anything. But you know, he might say that the reason they pulled him was false and that. And, you know, and then they could get into an argument there. But then, you know, defamation. So, you know, so what is defamation? Defamation is the act, uh, the action of damaging the good reputation of someone through slander or libel. Now, slander and libel, the only difference between them is that one is oral and one is written. So, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I actually forget which is which, and I did not remind myself beforehand. <laughs> Libel is Thank written. you. Okay. I, I thought that was it. I know this because of the great legal scholar of J. Jonah Jameson and Spider-Man 1. Yes. Uh, right. So, uh, uh, okay. So, you know, so one is, one is oral, one is written, but defamation, you know, it works just as well with either one. So Dan, Dan yeah. probably threatened a lawsuit saying, you know, you're going to hurt my good reputation by airing this on air. That will not just hurt my reputation, but that will hurt my economic prospects. That will hurt my job. That will hurt blah, 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 blah. And so if you look at the way the season has been edited, this season, in my opinion, has been edited entirely to counter Dan's defamation, threat of a defamation lawsuit. And that's why we have so much documentation about people complaining about Dan and his harassing behavior. It's because they are, they are most concerned not with the morality of the situation, not with how the viewer at home is going to react, but they are most concerned about a defamation lawsuit from this Hollywood asshole. Yeah. And whether he has a case or not, like, he seems like the kind of fucker who would lawyer up about this shit. You know, you know who lawyered up uh, when, you know, when the allegations came up about him? Weinstein. You know who lawyered yeah. up when the allegations came about him? Fucking everyone who is, who's been accused and me too, because they're all those type of assholes. Anyone who could afford yeah. it will do that. And from what I understand about Dan, like, he's, he's a pretty big agent. He has, like, he yeah. has clients who I have heard of, you know? Yeah, no, and and he runs his like he's a partner in his right. agency. So he's sharing so. in those profits, you know, and, th- and that's what pro- partner means. You know, it means that you are sharing in the profits brought in by other people, and usually you're only a partner if you're bringing in a lot of business yourself. So yeah, yeah, they're probably concerned about that. You know, they're probably concerned about the fact that, that you know that you know the legal team's going to have to spin up, and I'm sure Survivor has a very good legal team. Uh, but yeah, they're going to have to work, and they're going to have to pay, and it's going to cost money to defend this lawsuit. So when they cut this season, my my instinct, and this is the part I feel pretty good about, is that they cut it to prevent, uh, t- to kind of cut this off at the knees, and or to. Uh, and or to provide a, a numerous amount of evidence for a court of law when it comes to that without having to rely on calling people back in. They can do this and try to get some sort of early uh, motion to cut the lawsuit off early. Would it succeed? I'm not sure. But there is one fanta- – there, there is one tried and true defense against defamation. And you know what that is? Nope. The truth. Yeah, that helps sometimes. <laughs> if you you can't hurt someone's reputation if all you're doing is telling the truth. And so that's why you document what's been happening and that's why you show it uh, on national TV and that's why you clam up when people are saying, "Hey, you should have done better." Because yeah. if they admit they should have done better, then they open themselves up to the lawsuit from the employee and from the other contestants. And if they go too far the other way, then Dan's got ammo in theirs. So really the fact is, you know, when Feinberg said they should have called the season right there from a legal perspective, they probably would have agreed. Yeah. 
No, and that's, uh, like, again, that, another part of the big anger, we've touched upon this, is, like, you know, the show's uh, beyond lackluster reaction to uh, what's happened ever yeah. since. And, you know, Jeff Probst gives a couple of Kurt interviews, and then he's kind of been ghosted, or very, yeah. you know, very controlled interviews since then. And people are like, you know, that's not good enough. Those people are right. Uh, people, you know, even the... No, if we could get like a full apology and all of that, yes, that could help. And it's not going to happen. There, it, there is, there is actually one happen. way it could happen. Uh, yeah, I just I don't think it's going to happen, and I think it's because they're listening to their lawyers. Well, now. no, no, no. And the uh, one way it could happen is if they, it, it, it it does evolve legal matters, which is if they settle uh, with some people, and a condition of the settlement is a uh, formal apology. There because that yeah. because that so, actually yes, if, do, that does happen. Uh, th- there are mm-hmm. lawsuits where that is a condition of the settlement. Um, they want you know it's like okay fine we're gonna you know we'll end this lawsuit we'll take the money but you have to issue a statement uh, and an apology uh, publicly. Yeah, and I suppose something like that could happen. Things that would need to, of course, happen is the lawsuit to exist right. and all this. It's not going to, for one, it's make us feel better between now and forty. Like correct. it's not like that. Those statements are probably not going to happen. Uh, on another piece of news, if they happen, it's going to be a year or two in the future. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Another piece of news that will come out is that the finale will not be aired live. It is going to be recorded earlier again. Yeah, my perspective, you know, I I just watch lawyers on TV sometimes. It's all about that. Everything, you know, every decision that's been made uh, from what their public presentation, from, you know, Jeff's very curt remarks, from many of the contestants only giving exit interviews via email as opposed to on live, is uh, our lawyers uh, advise us to do this and we're more than happy to comply because there's they're scared. Yeah. And oh no, they are. They're... It's cowardly. Yes. And I, I understand the anger, but at the same time, I also understand how you know billion dollar corporations work, and it's not going to get better. Yeah. And it all circles back to the fact that the original sin already happened. Yes. And there's no corrections yeah. for it. All there is now is consequences, <laughs> and those consequences need to be big. Yeah. I'm. You know, we can raise our. I'm not. Angry at anybody for being angry. Uh, I want people to continue to raise their voices because that's that's all that can happen now. There's no way to make this better yeah. except for it to not happen again. Right. You know, uh, you talk about how you know this. You know, it's you can't put genie back in the bottle. You know, you you this all flows from the original sin, and you know it, it's been fucked since then. There is a legal doctrine which our friend M would be more you know, familiar with with me because it deals with criminal law. And the doctrine is called fruit of the poisonous tree. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because the entire idea behind that is that they decided once upon a time that if you did something illegal and then from, that, from what you obtained by that illegal act or you know, the unconstitutional act, you were able to follow a path that led you to evidence. You can't get that in just because, you know, maybe you took some constitutional steps later in the process because you fucked everything with that first act. And you never would have been in place to do anything later on if you hadn't fucked it all up here. And so that very first act, when you fucked up, has tainted it all Tainted it all, root and branch. Yeah, and we've been hanging on um, because we enjoy each other's company. (laughs) It's the largest part of it. And I don't just mean you and I. I don't just mean, you know, we who, you know, do the show. I mean the people we interact with as part of the show. But, yeah, there was no turning back for the moment that Kelly went home. If they kicked Dan out the next day, it's too fucking late. Right? Um, So, and then everything that we've had to experience since then... There's been, like, I frankly almost admired people who were getting angry about, you know, Tommy winning this season. At least they cared about something. Yeah. It's like, I, I, I imagine be caring was kind of my I big know. thing. Uh, although, again, I tried to, you know, have some fun with it. And ultimately, it's just like, yeah, I get it. You're just angry. And, you know, but some people were like, you know, it'd just be another slap in the face of, you know, they showed us you know, that the, the quote that a woman's going to win. I'm like, I promise you, a woman winning isn't going to make you feel better about anything that happened. Yep. Like, it, there's no turning back. And, and 
this, that's all this episode really coalesced for me. And then it comes to the big question. Well, what do I do now? I'm going to watch the next yeah. season. I'm not going to pussyfoot around about that. I've wanted to see this season for a very long time. Yeah. And does that mean I want to confront something about myself? Because it's I'm just being given something by, you know, a show that I am very angry with. Yeah, I probably do have to do some calculations there. Uh, but it's the way it is. And we've talked a lot about, rightly so, our anger toward the show for messing this up. And as you know, we keep saying here, um, that, that there's no coming back from the mistakes they made. And I, I guess before I move on, is there more legal implications you want to discuss? Or do you think you feel... I, I, I feel pretty good about uh, what I've covered. You know, obviously, th there might be more, but this is kind of what I was able to uh, gin up, uh, you know, with... Uh, you know, on the short-ish notice and the fact that, you know, I actually had to do work today and, uh, yeah. you know, and... It, yeah, and I think the reason why more discussing is, like, you know, again, anger absolutely of why you're not seeing more, but more just the recognition we're not going to see No, more yeah, no, we're not. Because this is these are corporate employees having to listen to this because there are millions of dollars at stake. Yep. Uh, and frankly, it's not even the million dollars of the people. Yeah, you know, it's always yeah. You know, you'd like to say then speak up, but you know sometimes it's other people's money. Um, and again, some things are more important than money, but this isn't the way corporations work. And I'm not expecting to get any better, particularly not from you know, employees of a show. Yeah, employees of a show is like yeah. Well, this is really bad, but you know we still got to let people vote, and there's still got to be a winner. Um, so, yeah, a lot of our anger, I, and I think as the weeks passed, it was more directed to the people who made this show, and I think rightly so, even more so than the contestants who, you know, really messed up in their obligations as humans yeah. as a reaction to this. But I feel like one thing we haven't done enough of that I wanted to really quickly touch on, and I think we haven't done it, is because it's self-evident, but... Oh, yeah, no, th this is very obvious... We really haven't enough talked about what a huge piece of shit Dan Spilo yeah. is. And I feel like we should probably sp spare a few words yeah. for that. So, you know, I really wanted that to spin out of my whole, you know, like, talk about how, you know, Dan is probably filing a lawsuit. Because the only person who'd be filing a lawsuit in the face of all this evidence is a huge fucking piece of shit. And you know how I said that everyone who's been accused of a lot of this stuff, well, they all lawyered up. Well, guess what? They're huge pieces of shit, too. And here's the thing about Dan. We have, sh we have sh been shown that not only does he do this, but that he's been told by at least one person on the season they don't like it. Lauren, you yeah. know, that's Kelly. She said that, you know, she doesn't mm -hmm. like to be touched. And he laughed it off as, oh, she's a germaphobe. You know, and then he also says something about, oh, well, like, what about, like, you know, like, uh, when we're sleeping and stuff like that, you can't, like, avoid people, which just kind of shows you the mind that he has because he's working to find exceptions. He's always working to find the exceptions so he doesn't have to respect someone else's wishes there. Yeah. But then also we have Lauren, you know, one of the people that we're not happy with, saying, I told him to stop and he stopped. So that's another person who told him, hey, stop fucking touching me. Yep. You know, we got, you know, it, it, it's – and then, of course, you know, when the meeting comes and afterwards he's, like, wounded. And he turns it on Janet in more like one of the most disgusting displays that I've still seen to date. And that's still actually probably the moment from this season that, like, actually hurts the most to think about. Is you know like them turning it back on Janet after the Kelly vote yeah, out? I agree that that made me more angry than anything else because it's like I like there was there was complicated dynamics at play that you know half of them thought that basically both halves kind of felt like the other group was doing what they were yeah. doing. You know uh, they're putting me on, they're using this to try and get me out. Uh, but after the fact, just piling on Janet when they fucking oh, knew. Yeah. Is yeah, I've I've never forgiven them for that. I've forgiven them for voting out Same. Kelly. Kelly wanted to vote out Missy for you know she was willing to look aside too. This is that this that that part 
makes me question the value of the show that I enjoy. Yep. But the way that they reacted to Janet after the fact, when she really can't do anything to you guys, that's the part I've never forgiven those people for. But this is about what a piece of shit right, Dan is. Right, right. But my point about Dan is that Dan was complicit in that. Because he's acting all wounded. He's acting yep. like, oh, where did this yep. come from? How could someone possibly think this of me? Especially my friend Janet. How could she think that of me? When he knows exactly why people think that of him. Because he's fucking doing it. He's been told he's doing it. And I don't care how vague production is. When someone's saying that to you, how fucking idiotic do you have to be to not get it? But then there's the other thing he did that talks to how big a piece of shit he is. And I referenced it earlier. And that's his whole, we go to the next tribal council. Jamal's about to be voted out. And Jeff ha- you know, is asking Dan about it. And, and Dan goes... You're just not going to let this go, are you, Jeff? And Jeff was like, no, you know, it's, you know, we need to talk about this. And Jeff is, you know, trying to make this into, you know, survivors, me too moment about how they overcome, you know, the issue of the day. But Dan's a piece of shit because all he wants to do is not talk about it because he knows he fucked up. But he also thinks in his own twisted mind, if I don't talk about it, it didn't happen. No one has to acknowledge this in any way, and I didn't do anything wrong. So then when he does apologize, he turns it on his head. And I talked about, you know, his whole, you know, it's like, well, Hollywood's where the Me Too movement started. And again, the fucked upness about that comment is if, you know, is he presents that as if it's the a progressive thing, a good thing that it started there. Instead of, it started there because people were getting fucking harassed. <laughs> and it went on for so long. And was just completely unchecked. So Dan is a manipulative, lying, harassing piece of shit. And I think that's pretty much all I had to say about that. And just like looking at this episode, which, yeah, he wasn't in a lot. Obviously, uh, most people will say still too much, and they're right. Um, Just what kind of fucking degenerate do you need to be to keep doing this to the point where you need to find, like, extra people to do this with? And obviously all it can be is reflection of somebody who has no regard for anybody else other than his own desires. Uh, That, you know, he views them as not people or at least not people worthy of their own, you know, autonomy and respect of him. And, you know... Fuck Dan is all you know again. Like we just haven't talked about that enough because it was implicit. You know, like yeah, of course, fuck that guy. Fuck all guys like that. But you know, I feel like it, it just really needs to be put down. Um, yeah, you know, when we're done talking about all the other problems and not to let any of that off the hook, but almost just like you know, the anger we've directed it probably to people we actually thought you know well of or yeah. you know better of or people that we thought you know there's something could be done and i think that's that's, that's a good use of our time you know i, I understand like ignoring um the degenerate because you know he's just awful and needs to be wiped off of you know uh, our tvs and our lives but you know it hadn't been said strong enough by me so you know fuck that guy um and uh, so that's what we had to say about that and uh with that um I don't have anything else to say about this episode. I'm not interested in talking about it. The only thing I have to say is that one of the things I'm maddest about it, Dan, is that he robbed us of the chance to see Dean play his fake legacy advantage and get voted out. That was a joke, people. Sorry, I had to have won the entire episode. I think most people were with you on that. Uh, both, you know, he did rob us of that. And also the small need for levity. I mean, obviously the biggest... Well, I mean, the biggest crime is what he's done to, you know, these women yep. and the way he's made him feel. The biggest crime he's done to this season is he, he fucked it all up. Without him, this, I think, is a very good season. I think I, I that think you're it, right. I, I think that's where it was going. I think it had plenty of potential to be there, but none of that fucking matters now. Yep. Um, so, yep, there we are. And again, to circle back to our main conversation, this is why... Um, and you needed to do a better job, Survivor, that there was no, you know, the show must go on and don't push him forward and oh, we'll clean this up in post. Uh, you made a huge mistake uh, due to not being willing to act fast enough. And this season that, you know, hundreds of people worked on never recovered. And it's to be determined whether your franchise will. Yep. And uh, with that, I think we're done for the week. I as I said... I don't really care to talk about anything else. I don't care. I, Next week. I'm frankly surprised we went as long as we did. 
Yeah, we honestly thought this would be half an hour because we only had like four topics on our breakdown, but it turns out we just talked about them a lot longer, and I think that's okay. Yeah. So uh, look for us then. Uh, thanks for checking us out, and um, yeah. that's enough for this episode.